Now I introduce Damian Eccles, who was one of the West Memphis Three convicted and sentenced to death. In July 2007, new forensic evidence was presented in his case, including evidence that DNA collected at the crime scene did not match the defendants. He was released from prison in 2011. I give to you now Damian Eccles. I guess uh, first I just want to say thank you to, to everybody who showed up today for this. Uh, you know, I know there's probably uh, a lot of other places you'd rather be than here. I know I probably would. Um, but thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Um, you know, I still, have, I still have nightmares. I still have panic attacks about this place. I still, you know, sometimes have dreams that I'm uh, trapped up in the bureaucratic labyrinth of corruption that passes for a justice system here and when I, I, I you know I, I don't want to come I didn't want to come back but when I heard about the conveyor belt of death that the politicians were trying to set in motion I guess I knew that I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I didn't come back and try to do something you know if I were to just sit around and, and let these people be killed I would have to think about that for the rest of my life thank you guys <laughs> You know, and I don't want to diminish or simplify anybody's pain. I understand that the victims' families go through a lot of pain when they're having to deal with things like this. But I want to say that for me, you know, the men that they're trying to murder, they're not just stories that I read about in the local newspaper or, or something I saw on the news. You know, these are people that I lived with for almost 20 years. I've seen them at their best them at their worst. I've seen them laugh. I've seen them cry. And strangely enough, it was these guys that they're getting ready to execute, the ones that the local politicians would tell you are irredeemably evil, that can't be saved or redeemed. These are the people who showed me more kindness, compassion, and generosity than any of the good people that are trying to kill them ever did. You know, for uh, 18 years and 76 days, that's how long I was trapped in hell here. The local politicians tried to execute me. Even when DNA testing came out that excluded me and the other two men that they had convicted from the scene of the crime, they still kept trying to kill me. After DNA testing came out, I sat on death row for two more years while they tried to figure out how they could kill me and not have to admit they had made a mistake. These people would have murdered an innocent person without a second thought if it meant that they could further their political careers or keep their jobs. You know, that's the level of, of corruption that's inherent within the system. Some of the, the men that were killed this time, you know, I'm not here to tell you that they're all innocent because some of them aren't. But some of the men that they're trying to kill this time, they're mentally ill. You know, you're, you're talking about people who are so insane that they don't even really comprehend where they are or why they're here. They're not even you know, remotely connected to reality in any sort of way whatsoever. But the state wants to tell us that being mentally handicapped doesn't mean anything. They don't have any qualms with murdering people who have the intellect of a child who be who or who belong in a mental health facility. You know, one of these men that they're getting ready to kill was pimped out by his own mother at the age of 12, and he's been the victim of sexual assault his entire life. Another one believes that being executed is the way that God's preparing him to be a minister. The horror stories that I saw while I was in the Arkansas judicial system, it goes on and on and on. I could tell you horrible story after horrible story all day long. But the state wants you to praise them for executing people with an IQ of 69. They want you to see that and see how tough on crime they are. So see them. See them. See what they're doing. Witness what they're doing. And then in return, let them know how tough on corruption you can be. They may very well, they may very well win this battle. You know, we're all here today to try to keep the state from killing people. 
they may go through with it despite our best efforts, despite everyone here doing everything they can. They may still very well do it. But you can turn this victory into ashes in their mouth. Let it be a Pyrrhic victory. You know, during the next election, turn them out and send them packing. And if the ones that come into office in their place are no less morally bankrupt than these, then turn them out too. Keep doing it. Keep voting them out until you have leaders who actually have conscience, intelligence, strength, and can govern with compassion. Uh, I'm going to keep this short. I'm going to wrap this up. I just want to close up by saying thank you to everybody that's gathered here today. You know, you're, you're gathered here in the face of of hatred you're gathered here in the face of corruption and one day history will show that you had the strength courage and fortitude to show up when it mattered that you didn't simply bow down and lick the boots of those in authority i just want to say that i salute you i stand in solidarity with you thank you so much and (laughs) thank you one of, uh, just real quick, because I know you guys don't want to be out here all day, but one of the men who is responsible for saving my life just wanted to say a couple words because this is someone who, who kept me from being killed. This is someone who stepped up to the plate when I was where these guys are now and uh, did everything he could to me. So uh, my brother, this is my brother, Johnny Depp. Hi, good afternoon, how are you? You want me down in front? No. Good. Uh, I, um, <coughs> I've, had, I've had the the pleasure and the honor of, of knowing Damien and Lori for a, a number of years now through uh, some bumpy, bumpy lows and some bumpy highs and and then uh, I've followed him all the way to here, because uh, I'll I'll follow him anywhere, you know. Um, but I'm I'm proud to be here, and I'm proud to stand in absolute solidarity and uh, absolute support of my dear brother Damien, who uh, who at one time, as uh, as you all know, was. Uh, sacrificed here into unbearable purgatory. You should patent that. Um, you're welcome. Um, but he was locked into this tiny little place where he had to live his life from someone's sentence of death um, and for a crime that we all know but many knew then was a crime that he was not they were not um, they were compl- they were absolutely innocent of the crime and um, and they're out <laughs> yeah. and that's what's important here in uh, this funny town, America, um, I feel that if we're expected to live our lives to the letter, I mean, we're expected to live our lives to the letter of the democratic law, and there's no ins and in-betweens and no outside there. It's precise. So if we're expected to live to the letter of the law to that degree, then I figure um, whether you believe in the death penalty or not, surely the law must abide by the letter. If it's the letter of the law, a 
abide in a way if the charge was if you were sentenced to be beaten for 30 years or dragged by horses or whatever listen we have the right for them to abide by the letter of the law to be to stand back and understand and, and have a look at what they're really doing over amount of uh, some sort of drugs that uh, don't work and people suffer and they seize and they and it's 15 ampules and two and a half three hours of utter agony and burning inside uh, um no sorry no no that's no good on no but arkansas unfortunately once again believes that uh, they are above such constitutional letters. And they almost put uh, an innocent man to death, as we know, which was a tragic, pointless loss. I seconds away at any time of his life, his incarceration, that was dangling over his head um, bye bye. You can just feed me the lunch. Um, I just don't, just don't believe that um, that possibility should ever, ever, ever happen again. Um, for people's egos, for people's po political ambitions, for anything under the sun. Um, there's a wrong thing to do and there's a right thing to do. The right thing must be done. So, cheers. Thanks for having me.